to you. Uh, you one who is stuck in the jam, but right on the weekends, however, on the weekdays, you don't ride your bicycle to work, thinking that it's probably impossible. So I just thought I might take this opportunity to share with my you know, short wealth of experience. work commuting for it since 2014 honestly it's not too difficult but there are some tips and tricks that you might not know even though you are riding a bicycle every weekend weekend warriors we call it you'll be surprised so depending on your skill level in terms of bike handling the first tip that I want to say is you got to practice what we call defensive riding now it's a fine balance between being seen on the road and being a nuisance depending on your skill level the more skill you are if you see the double yellow line that you often find at the side of the road by the road curbs with your varying skill level now practice riding somewhere between the double yellow line or maybe up to the extent of a third way into the road lane naturally as vehicles try to overtake you they require a wider space since they can't squeeze you along the same lane and overtake you in the same lane that way it tends to create a safer environment for you to ride in now in contrast if you were to provide comfort and welfare to the riders at the expense of your own safety if your skill level is supposedly higher now that way try to ride between the two yellow lines um, but that way know that the odds of vehicles overtaking you in the same lane is really high so you got to know to expect that to come and naturally react accordingly but as always the disclaimer is safety first now generally when you commute you tend to be on your own so you got to be well aware of the surrounding unlike riding on the weekends where you ride in a big group now when you're by yourself if you ever have to filter rightwards turn rightwards turn leftwards, be it any intentional turning or filtering away. Make your signaling intentions clear to other road users, be it putting your hand out, pointing rightwards. Now that way when you behave predictably, the vehicles around you can um, take better care of you and provide a safer environment for you to ride in. The next tip I have is pertaining to cycling route, the choice of route that you take to your destination. Now, in contrast to the weekends that you ride on, there tends to be less vehicles. But on the weekdays instead, you got to know between your origin and your destination location, what comes in between in terms of traffic condition. And the time of the day that you commute on, potentially ride your bike and take the choice of route on the weekend instead and now understand that when you're riding by yourself the tendency of you to take right turns tends to become more challenging so where possible if you can plan your route with more left turns although sometimes we know it's inevitable but just know that riding by yourself a left turn is a lot easier than a right turn now of course nothing beats going straight ahead of you choosing the shortest route to work is always very tempting but sometimes look hard enough and then uh, from time to time you get to instead choose a route that tends to be lesser in traffic which gives you more comfort when you commute to work the route that i just took it's a dedicated one-way left turn so if you come from the other way there's no way for you to navigate from woodlands road to sungai gado area so unfortunately, I can't take this route, which tends to present with less vehicles, traffic-wise, when I'm going towards work instead. This is solely reserved for going home. Usually for road signs, there tends to be two. One, 
sign tends to come approximately between 300 to 400 meters, which kind of signifies your preparation to turn right, for example, in my case, currently. Now, as you're reaching the junction soon, about 100 meters to go, usually another sign comes, and that allows you to navigate your way rightwards. So based on traffic conditions and your skill level to navigate traffic, now take your comfort level, add your comfort level to filter rightwards the earlier, the least skill you are. One good reason why I don't like to commute, be it driving or taking the public transport, it's getting stuck in traffic. I think at some point we will approach London lockdown situation, not the most ideal circumstance, unfortunately. cyclists or hobbies, I guess you and I, we are both culprits of this. I don't know if this is a phenomenon or what, but it seems like whenever I survey especially close friends around me who cycle, people who work out in this sport tend to not pay attention to stretching. But if you ever ever want to pick up this as a form of commute, just know that you're putting in a lot of mileage and working your legs hard. So you know, put in time and effort to stretch. Uh, if you really, really genuinely do not have time or uh, can't seem to get into the habit of stretching, there is just one spot that I think you should pay attention to, which is your hamstring. Now, naturally, as you think about it, cyclists, us, we always, always tend to have short hamstrings due to the effect of our revolutions the cycling motion because we never ever stretch our leg outwards so naturally as your muscles tighten the one that gets tight a lot is your hamstring and because of that it tends to cause a lot of issues like neck pain and back pain and if you think about it it's all interconnected now lastly i just want to put it out there here thanks for watching thanks for tuning in if you have stayed this far genuinely from the bottom of my heart thank you if you are keen to learn more and wish the that I share a little bit more of my commute experience. Now leave a comment down below that I know you're out there listening and watching. And maybe I can share more of a bit of a know-how, but these are purely and merely from my personal experience. So thanks for watching. I see you in the next one. Goodbye.